Hello, my name is Jeff Hajek. I am the author of What Do You Mean I Gotta Be Lean? I appreciate you giving me a few minutes of your valuable time to speak with you about the cause and effect diagram. Let's start out by clearing something up. The cause and effect diagram goes by a couple of other names. One is the Ishikawa diagram, after Mr. Ishikawa, who either invented it or popularized it, depending on who you listen to. The other is the fishbone diagram, for the obvious reason that the structure looks like, you guessed it, fish bones. So, how does this tool work? Well, you start out by identifying a problem that you are facing, and you write the effect of that problem on the right side of your paper. Alternatively, you may be doing this on a whiteboard or on butcher paper that you have taped on the wall if you're using this tool as part of a group project. Your next step is to draw a long, horizontal line as the backbone of the fishbone diagram. Then you're going to draw the spines off the backbone. These spines provide the groupings for the causes that you will be adding to the chart. In the standard version of the shop floor fishbone, you'll see six spines corresponding to the six M's. The six M's are materials, methods, machines, measurements, mother nature, and manpower. You might, however, see manpower switched out with a more gender neutral word. In the office, you'll likely see the six P's, people, process, policy, plant, program, product. These categories may vary. The whole goal is to start organizing your thinking and provide some structure to the problem-solving process. Making categories helps in two ways. One, it helps you improve idea generation. Systems simply help you get more causes. Two, it helps when you move into the improve step. When the causes are grouped, you'll see trends and opportunities more readily. Off each of these spines, you'll draw horizontal lines to record the causes. Let's talk for a minute about how you come up with ideas. Most ideas come from either a brainstorming session or from some sort of waste walk where you observe the process you're working on and record the causes of the problems. Sometimes the brainstorming is done separately and added to the cause and effect. Other times it is done directly onto the fishbone. When working on a project, you might end up realizing that there are actually two effects. In that case, you'll simply do two different diagrams. So let's move on to an example. But instead of looking at this from a work perspective, let's look at a problem we all face every day, getting to work on time. Many processes rely on accurate measurements to be effective. It is hard to get to work on time with a clock that is set wrong or that runs too fast or too slow. The manpower category is basically human error when a process exists but is not followed. Be careful though. Often the reason that the process is not followed is that it's not a very good one. Snow on the highway affects your travel time. In your company, things like power outages, humidity, or a host of other environmental conditions play a role in problems. Machines are simply the tools of your trade. Your car is the most obvious machine that you rely on to get to work on time. Problems with methods are often seen as human error. In truth, bad processes are more likely to be the culprit. Materials play a big role in manufacturing. It doesn't play as big of a role in getting to work. If, however, you inadvertently chug down some decaf by mistake, you might drift back off on a couch and end up being late to work. When you're doing a cause and effect diagram, you can keep drilling down as long as you'd like. Something of a root cause analysis. Think why your car broke down, or why you drank decaf by mistake, then add those in. Just a few overall tips. First, don't get wrapped up on exactly where the cause goes. Just quickly think about where it should most likely fit, and put it there. You can always move it later. Second, Leave some space if you're doing this as a team exercise. It never seems to work out evenly. Some effects are material-centric, some are susceptible to machine failure. You might not realize this until the exercise is underway. The cause and effect diagram can get sloppy in a hurry. At this point, you are now looking at a finished fishbone diagram that will help you move on to improving your process. 
So now let's do a quick wrap up of this presentation. One thing that most people forget, learning the tool is only the first step. It's used when a facilitator is leading an exercise, but a tool often gets filed away until the next big event. I think that's a waste. Put this tool to use routinely whenever it is needed. In my experience, the people who regularly use tools such as this one are the engaged, satisfied employees, regardless of their position in the organization. I think reading my book is a good step in that direction. But even if you choose some other guide, I still want to stress this point. Lean works best with satisfied employees who see what they can personally get out of Lean. Let me wrap up by saying thanks again for choosing Velaction for your training needs. More information on this topic and others is available on my website, www.velaction.com, located under our Lean Dictionary. I'm Jeff Hajek, wishing you best wishes on your Lean travels.